It is a brisk Tuesday night here in Mawa, New Jersey. Some clouds in the sky and the sun's going down, but that doesn't matter because we are here inside the Bradley Center for some Ramapo sports. It's the Ramapo Roadrunners against the Montclair State Redhawks in an NJAC women's volleyball matchup. Hello fans, alongside men's head volleyball coach Kevin Rogers, I'm Ryan Morick. Well, the Lady Roadrunners are on a bit of a hot streak. They've won nine of their last 12 games they split four games this weekend in Hoboken at the Stevens Invitational, bringing their overall record to 15-6. and six. And they enter tonight with a 2-0 and record in the conference. And a lot of the success comes from Larissa Iwiskew. The six-foot outside hitter from Westwood, New Jersey, has been the most productive member of this year's squad. She's leading the team in almost every category. She has 372 kills on the season, averaging over five kills a set. The second highest, Emily Guzman with 144 on the year. Her 47 service aces on the year is also a team high, and she leads the team in points by over 230. She has the third most blocks on the team behind Guzman and Caitlin Ward. She's also shown a lot of skill on the defensive side of the ball as well. She has 304 digs, which ranks first for the Roadrunners, and in Hoboken this weekend she had 67 kills in four games, 37 of them coming on Saturday against the United States Coast Guard Academy. That's a season high. Talk about a freshman phenom. Coach, what more can you ask from an outside hitter? Your outside his hitter has to be your go-to person, the person who can deal with sets that aren't in the greatest of spots, who that uh, are tight to the net, that are off the net. So Larissa has shown that she can clearly handle everything so far, so she's doing an excellent job. And a lot of her success would not have happened if it weren't for Caitlin McIver, the junior center from Pascack Valley High School. She has 575 assists on the year so far. That's just under 10 a set. She's on pace to tear apart her team high of 718 from last year. And Coach, it was you, Guzman, and Rachel Sumwer would not be as productive as they are this year if it weren't for their setter. Absolutely. K-Mac has great hands. Uh, every time she throws up the ball, it's nice and clean. You see no spin on the ball. Uh, great location on the sets. Uh, I think she's doing an excellent job. Let's take a look at the NJAC standings so far. Stockton holds the top spot in the conference with a 3-0 conference record and a 17-3 record overall. The Roadrunners are in second with a 2-0 conference record and 15-6 overall. So with a win and a Stockton loss tonight, the Roadrunners can move into the top spot of the conference standings. William Patterson is in third at 12-1 with a 2-1 conference record. And tonight's opponent, Montclair State, are in a three-way tie for fourth at 1-1 in the conference and 14-5 overall. So there can be a lot of shakeups tonight. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. Good evening and welcome to the Bradley Center on the campus of Brempo College for tonight's women's volleyball matchup featuring the Montclair State University Red Hawks and your Brempo College Roadrunners. The Hawks enter tonight's match with a 15-5 overall record, 1-1 one one in the NJAC, while your Roadrunners stand at 15-6 overall and 2-0 in the conference. Let's meet the starting lineups first for the visiting Red Hawks. Number one, Melissa Terpstra. Number three, Madison Mount. Number four, Captain Angela Campo. Number 14, Alyssa Angel. Number 16, Courtney Matlock. Number 20, Rebecca Matsker. And Olivera, number 17, Lily Skinzilla. The Red Hawks are coached by Eddie Sansewich in his fourth season. And now for your Rampo College Roadrunners. A 5'11 freshman from Manorville, New York. Number two, Amanda Rose. A 5'6 freshman from Manorville, New York, number 5, Sarah Mulligan. A 6-foot junior from Piscataway, New Jersey, number 6, Caitlin Ward. A 6-foot freshman from Westwood, New Jersey, number 7, Larissa Awiskew. A 6-foot sophomore from Washington, New Jersey, number 17, Sarah Vogelis. A 5'7 junior from Hillsdale, New Jersey, number 26, Captain Caitlin Fiver. And at Libero, a 5'3 junior from East Brunswick, New Jersey, number one, Captain Emily Harris. The Roadrunners are coached by Rob Machado in his 10th year, who is assisted by Bill Lee.
All right, it looks like we're just about on the way. Montclair is ready, Ramapo is ready. And let's do it here at Ramapo. Serves up. Three ball up there, hit to the outside. Ball goes out of bounds, point for Montclair. And the Red Hawks take a one nothing lead. Yeah, you can kind of tell Amanda got under the ball a little too much on that last hit, ended up hitting it out because of it. She got behind that ball, probably would have won it. Clears up, ball goes out of bounds, another point for Montclair, two or nothing. Yeah, if Emily just moved her, moved her feet a little bit more towards that ball, and instead of reaching for it, probably would have been a better pass. All right, here we go. Montclair with the early lead. 2-0 serves up. Harris sets it up. Hit to the outside. Hit is blocked. And another point for Montclair. 3-0 here. Yeah, slow start for Rampo right now. Montclair hasn't done much but just get it in the court. Rampo has just made the errors giving Montclair the points. Here we go. New serve. Caught there, free ball, hit to the outside. And another one blocked. Another free ball here. Hit to the outside for Rose. Saved there by the Red Hawks. Bumped over. Harris to McIver. And another one saved by Montclair. Nice play there. And touched by Harris. 4 nothing. Ball goes out of bounds. And a little miscommunication there by the Roadrunners. Still need to clean it up a little bit. This is a big conference game. They know that, and I think the nerves are getting the best of them right now. They just need to calm down, go out there, and start playing like they have been all season. Alyssa with the set up, back to her. Nice. That was a great pass by Larissa on that one. Set it up for a nice, easy uh, hit. It was dug by Montclair, but because the ball was set so tight, the uh, Red Hawks ended up making a blocking error. So Ramapo is on the board. Here's Harris with her serve. Three ball. There it goes over. Great read by Emma. Larissa. Balled up there. Free ball hit to the outside. Ball goes out of bounds. Point for Ramapo. They cut the lead in half. It's 42 Montclair. Happy game so far. Six points on the board, six errors mm -hmm. by all teams. I'm looking for somebody to get a kill. Surfer Harris. Ball goes over into the net. Four to three, down by one. And once again, another error uh, by the Red Hawks. All right, it looks like we're just about on the way. Montclair is ready, Ramapo is ready. And let's do it here at Ramapo. Serves up, three ball up there, hit to the outside. Ball goes out of bounds, point for Montclair. And the Red Hawks take a one nothing lead. Yeah, you can kind of tell Amanda got under the ball a little too much on that last hit, ended up hitting it out because of it. She got behind that ball, probably would have won it. Clears up, ball goes out of bounds, another point for Montclair, two or nothing. Yeah, if Emily just moved her, moved her feet a little bit more towards that ball, and instead of reaching for it, probably would have been a better pass. All right, here we go. Montclair with the early lead. 2-0 serves up. Harris sets it up. Hit to the outside. Hit is blocked. And another point for Montclair. 3-0 here. Yeah, slow start for Rampo right now. Montclair hasn't done much but just get it in the court. Rampo has just made the errors giving Montclair the points. Here we go. New serve. Caught there, free ball, hit to the outside. And another one blocked. Another free ball here. Hit to the outside for Rose. 
Saved there by the Red Hawks. Bumped over. Harris to McIver. And another one saved by Montclair. Nice play there. And touched by Harris. 4 nothing. Ball goes out of bounds. A little miscommunication there by the Roadrunners. Still need to clean it up a little bit. This is a big conference game. They know that. And I think the nerves are getting the best of them right now. They just need to calm down, go out there, and start playing like they have been all season. Alyssa with the set up. Back to her. Nice. That was a great pass by Larissa on that one. Set it up for a nice, easy uh, hit. It was dug by Montclair, but because the ball was set so tight, the uh, Red Hawks ended up making a blocking error. So Ramapo's on the board. Here's Harris with her serve. Three ball. There it goes over. Great read by Emma. Larissa. Balled up there, free ball, hit to the outside. Ball goes out of bounds, point for Ramapo. They cut the lead in half, it's 42 Montclair. Sloppy game so far. Six points on the board, six errors mm -hmm. by all teams. I'm looking for somebody to get a kill. Surfer Harris. Ball goes over, into the net. Four to three, down by one. And once again, another error uh, by the Red Hawks. Four errors for the Roadrunners, three errors for the Red Hawks. Whoever's the cleanest is probably going to win. And also, uh, the blocks are a big difference as well uh, with Montclair. Although we did get two blocks in a row at the end. Uh, we need to get more quality points like that. Hit to the outside for Sumwar. Kept alive by Montclair. No one gets the ball. That can't be a good thing for Montclair. 17-10. Red yeah. will take control. A slight mis miscommunication error by Montclair. But at this point, they can almost afford it. Uh, they're up seven points. Um, right now they're kind of just cruising, but they don't want to cruise too much because that's when Rampo might just go ahead and, uh, and take the lead. So they don't want to get too comfortable here. Hit to the outside, nice play by Harris to keep it alive. Hit to the okay. outside. Nice play to keep the ball alive again. Nice stick there, but it's not enough. 18-10. And not a hard hit there by Montclair, but it seemed like Larissa was ready to hit more than she was ready to dig. So she was ready to go back outside to hit instead of uh, playing that ball up. She got caught, ended up reaching for the ball, ended up shanking it uh, towards the net. A great pass, that's what they need. Uh, low set by Kaitlin there. Ball goes out of bounds, point rather, Paul. And if you're going to want to get on a nice run, you're going to want to hear. 18 to 11, first set. Montclair is up. Harris with the serve. Head up there to the outside. And that time the ball ended up hitting. Uh, Sarah, um, but she wasn't close enough to the net, ended up hitting her, and went back on to Rampo's side. Set up there to the outside. Once again, the pass that was behind the 10 foot line, ended up having to force it to the That ball stays in bounds, and there's another point for Rampo. Cut shot there by the wrist. A little questionable call there. It looked like it was almost out. Could have gone either way. Luckily it went for the low guys. Nicole Herman comes into the game for Rachel Selmore. Herman, a 5'9 junior from Parsippany. Set to serve here. 
Little tip drill going on here. Hit to the outside. Not a very powerful hit, but it works. Excellent hit. Well placed, right over the block. Usually the defense is around the block. Uh, so when you hit it over the block, uh, it kind of messes up the defense a little bit. A great shot by Larissa. Goes over both blockers. Nice play by Harris to keep it alive. But it winds up hitting the court anyway. Montclair, five points away from taking his first set. And you know what? Rainfall had a, a shaky start to this set. And they've been playing a lot more consistent. Uh, right now, if they just keep this up, I think that they can either A, come back in this set, or uh, once the set is over, I think it will be a lot more a lot more competitive for the second set. Three ball up here, Montclair keeps it alive. Nice play there. Bart goes out of bounds. Yeah, and right now, Larissa is just shot after shot after shot. She's not really cranking the ball down. She's trying to place it. And it's actually working for her. But I really want to just see her put that ball down where they're just, uh, where it just hits the floor and, and no, nothing else. Nice curl there. 21-14. Well, we thought we saw the ball go out of bounds, but I guess not. So 2015, my player. Ball hit to the outside. Nice play there by Smart, but it's kept alive by my player. Harris to Herman to Guzman. And there's the kill. Nice. Once again, ball goes over the top of the block defense is confused they don't know where to go uh and that's where they're getting their kills rampo needs to continue doing that keep trying to go over the block because that's what seems to be working hitting percentage. And if you take a look at amanda rose her percentage is at negative 66 percent right now no kills, two errors, three total attempts. So right. keep in mind that it is possible to actually be in the negatives. But here we go, back up started. Nice kill there by Courtney Matlock. That's her seventh kill on the day. And ball was hit out by Montclair there. Oh, whoops. All right, screwed that one up. Oh, both them down here. That's okay. Oh, once again, nice pass by Montclair. Hit that outside of the block. Rampo was well positioned. Dug that ball perfectly. Rachel ended up uh, getting a nice touch on it, putting it over. Looks like momentum is on the Roadrunner's side right now. Two enough lead here early in the second set. That's a great pass by Montclair. Someone hitting it to the outside. And point Roadrunners, what happened there, Kevin? Well, Larissa ended up tooling uh, the Montclair block, so that means it hit Montclair's block, and then it went out of bounds. It actually hit that antenna up there, so hit off the block of Montclair, went out of bounds. Point for Rampo. So look to the outside, and that goes out of bounds. Madison Mount. Yeah, and Alyssa, just like Rampo had, uh, did last set. Uh, she ended up getting under that ball, ended up hitting it out of bounds because of it. She needs to get more on top of the ball so that way she can hit it down there. There's a service error. Not the way you want to put Montclair on the board, but it's 4-1 here in the second set. Yeah, four-point run is, is definitely nice. Uh, a coach isn't going to be mad about that at all. It's when you miss that first serve that coaches get a little upset. Nice to go to keep the ball alive. Here's a whistle. And you see the referee put up two fingers. That means it's a double contact. A lot of spin on that ball. Uh, it wasn't a clean set by my player. Eddie Stowinski not happy with the call, but too late. 5 1 round of call. And they are set to serve. Serves up, hit to the outside. Nice little spin, uh, spin there. 
the ball stays alive. Ball still up. Harris keeps it alive. Hit to the outside. Ball goes. Looks like it touched someone in front. Yes? Yes, once again, ball, they hit over the block, but it did touch the block and then went out of, out of bounds. That's a tool uh, point for Ramapo. Tries to get the block, but the block goes out of bounds. So you can credit Alyssa Angel with her fourth kill of the night. And Alyssa Angel uh, tooled Rampo right back. Ended up hitting the outside of the block there. Ball went up, went out of bounds off the block. Madison Mount serves, goes into the net. So an unforced error. And Rampo is up five. This is the start that they needed after losing that first set. A great 7-2 start just consistency at this point. Right now, Montclair is passing well, but their hitters aren't putting the ball down. Oh, and a bad pass by Montclair. I spoke a little too early. We are going to try and set something up here. Guzman, nice play there to keep the ball alive. That was a powerful hit. Someone hits it too smart. Oh, it's blocked back over to the left side. Guzman. Kill goes out of bounds. Not the best setup for Guzman. I think that's why the ball went out of bounds. No, instead of uh, the ball uh, being placed inside of the antenna, it was placed outside of the antenna. She had to take a side step out, uh, wasn't able to get a max jump, ended up hitting under the ball and hitting out. Harris hits it to the outside. Block there. What's the call? Uh, net violation on the block by number 20, Rebecca Matasca. All right, so Larapo takes an eight to three lead. Amanda Rose comes into the game. And Nicole Herman and Emma Guzman will take a quick seat. Came back with the serve. There's a tip drill. And it looks like the block. Yep. 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 Pretty much the block uh, wasn't set in time. They didn't get. Here's McIver with the save. Bad set up there, but it's kept alive. Nice quick kill there. Caitlin Ward with the kill. And you saw that that was a very quick set. That was a one ball set to Ward, and it was just perfect. Uh, the block didn't even get up in time. It was so quick. Caitlin Ward with her third kill of the night. A short serve, but even better pass by Montclair. Ooh, nice, nice block. Block, but a cover by Montclair. Five set up to smart. Nice play there to keep the ball alive. Nice diving play. Looking like an outfielder. Oh, Montclair. A little bit of a miscommunication. All right. Looking nice and clean, Ramapo. Looking nice and clean. That's the difference. 22 14 here in the second set. Ramapo versus Montclair. Nice tip drill over there. Larissa, powerful hit, but kept alive. Rebecca can't convert on her kill. And Montclair's going to get a free ball here. Set up to Haley. Nice dig there by Harris, but winds up being just out of the reach for Rampo, and Montclair is creeping up. Yeah, that was actually a miss hit by Montclair there. Uh, she actually hit it. It kind of walked a little bit. It kind of died a little earlier than what... Emily, the libero for Ramapo, uh, expected, ended up getting caught on her on her heels, uh, didn't make the play. Another quick attempt at a kill there. The kill goes out of bounds. That's an attack error for Montclair, and Ramapo takes the lead. To, uh, excuse me, they increase their lead to 23-15. And you see, every time it goes out of bounds, 
that hitter is just getting under the ball. They need to start talking to their setter a little bit more. Maybe the setter needs to put it a little bit higher so that way they're, they can get behind the ball. They can get on top of the ball a little bit more. Maybe it's a little bit too quick for Montclair and they're just getting there a little bit late uh, and that's why uh, they're hitting under it. You can give Rebecca Madister her sixth kill of the night. Set up to the outside for Larissa. Once again, Larissa tries to tool that block, but it's not working. Nice play there to keep the ball alive. Harris, nice play. A little tip drill. Montclair wanting a net violation, but they don't get it. Harris, nice play to keep the ball alive again. Larissa, nice play there. Not hit too hard, but hit in no man's land, and Ramapo has set point. And what Eddie the coach was actually complaining about, he was actually saying that uh, K-Mac, uh, the setter for Rampo, was actually is a back row player and that she attacked it front row. Uh, so that's what he was complaining about. Set point for Rampo. Here's the serve. Solid block by Rachel. Successful block. Went up and onto Rampo's side. Selmore. Oh, a little bit of a collision. Nice block, but it goes out of bounds, and Montclair stays alive, 24-17. Yeah, and Rob, once again, he is just telling the girls, you, you keep reaching for the ball, and you need to just make sure that your, your block is set and that you're turning your hands into the court. Courtney Matlock with her eighth kill on the night. And finally, the tool works out for Larissa. She just kept going for those hand, the outside hands of the right side blocker for Montclair. Third set ready to start up. Montclair is just about ready to serve. And here we go. Hit to Selmore. Harris sets it up. Melissa. Nice block there. Ball's kept alive. Free ball. Nice play there by Harris to keep it alive. Guzman just sets it over and plays it safe. Another nice play by Harris to keep it alive. Melissa. Can't convert. Matlock with the kill. That's her ninth on the night. Long volley, but Montclair wins the battle. Yeah, great effort by both teams on that one. Uh, great digs by Emily, the libero for uh, Rampo. And I think Mon uh, Rampo needs to be a little bit more aggressive on their attack in order to end that rally in their favor. Selmore. Ooh. Nice job by Rachel. Just went up and just wailed at it. Uh, didn't really try and place it or anything. Just wanted to hit it as hard as she can. Ended up uh, being perfect. Hit the Montclair block, but went on Montclair's side. Now, when you want to try to get a point based on a kill, when do you decide whether you should just wail at it like someone did or Montclair gets the point? When do you decide whether you want to just wail at it like Rachel did or when you want to do a little tip drill like Larissa has been doing a lot today? It kind of just depends on the set. So if that set is nice and tight uh, and it's away from the block, you want to just go after it and you want to get on top of it and you want to try and smash it straight down. But if the set is a little bit off the net, maybe five, six, ten feet off the net, now you want to go for more location uh, because you're not going to be able to hit it straight down. So you want to try and place it well, get the defense, uh, unsettled a little bit, trying to create a free ball uh, for side. That ball hits the antenna, and Ramapo takes a 3-2 lead. Of course, the ball is not allowed to hit the antenna, so that's why Ramapo gets the point. Yep, error by Haley on that one. Haley did good the first set, having three kills on four attempts. The second set, she had one error on six attempts, no kills. 
Nice block there by Guzman. Naropo takes a 4-2 lead, and momentum is heading their way. Blocked by Emery. Uh, Montclair ended up getting a touch on it, but it ended up staying on the arms of a Montclair player too long. Uh, it was called a lift. And there is a service error by Selmore, and Montclair is down one in the third set. Nice kill there, and we are all tied up at four. Bad pass by the whistle there. Uh, ball just went right over the net. Perfect kill. Uh, perfect position for the Montreal hitters. And Montreal just gives it right back. That's their second service error this set alone. They had two in the first one, two in the second one. So you don't want to get two service errors this early in the set. They've already given Rampo 40% of their points on service errors, so they've got to make sure that they stay consistent. Here's K Mack with her serve. Set up to Madisker. Nice block there. And once again, a solid block by Rampo. Biggest difference uh, from the first set to the second and third set. They're just getting some solid touches on that block. Uh, Rob's coaching is definitely. Uh, on the sideline has definitely improved their their wellness in this uh, in the last two sets. That was Kayla Ward's seventh block on the night. Hit to the outside for Matlock. It's tipped by a rather pro roadrunner, and that causes a little bit of a redirection and it falls to the ground. And Montclair is down one. And it seemed like Haley uh, from Montclair ended up hitting it over and between Rampo's block. Kind of went off the, the block a little bit weird. It was a little bit difficult for Rampo to dig it. Harris is jammed there, but it's kept alive. Uh, great effort there by Caitlin. Hit to the outside for Rose. Whistle's blown. Point Rampo. Net violation by Rebecca Matasco. Yeah, it seems like Rebecca's block isn't too clean, it's not too consistent. Uh, she's getting to the block, but every time she's either hitting the net or she's just not close enough to the net, she needs to find that medium if she wants to be a little bit more successful in the game. Matt Locke's kill gets blocked by Rarico, and it's 8-5. And Haley uh, just hit right into the block on that one. And once again, biggest difference for Rampo. They're earning their points here. They're getting blocks. They're getting kills. And that's what they need to do in order to be clean. Nice kill there by Haley Merrill. And Haley just hit right over Amanda on that one. Amanda's just a, a little bit short compared to some of the other front row players. Uh, but Haley did an excellent job of realizing that and going over her block. Uh, and the defense just wasn't positioned. Yep. Corrected because of it. Haley six foot, Amanda 5'11. That inch means a lot. Nice kill there by Caitlin Ward. <laughs> Caitlin Ward with her fourth kill on the night, and it's 9 6 Ramapal. Set up there to the outside for Matlock. And ball goes out of bounds. There's an attack error for Matlock, and it's 10 6 Ram Yeah, it looks like Courtney Matlock is trying to tool off the block. Uh, Overswung it to the left, ended up putting it out. Hit to the outside, they're going to try Matlock again. Damak and Harris keep it alive. Here comes Larissa. Nice kill there. And Ramapo is up five. And that's what I was saying Larissa needed to do. She needs to go cross court more often. She keeps trying to tool the block, trying to go line. She needs to start hitting hard cross court. And I think that's where she's going to be more successful. And that's where she's going to get her kick.
Big miscommunication there by, uh, I think it was, uh, Eric Obama and Harry Knight. She could have had a more successful hit. Hit to Emily. Showing some power, but Montclair keeps it alive. Sends it back over to the Roadrunners. Powerful hit by Emily. Yeah, and Renfro, anytime they're running that middle attack, they're running that quick one ball, uh, Montclair has no answer for it. They are just surprised at how quick it is every single time. They need to make adjustments. They need to be ready for that if they're going to compete here. Um, Harris hit those out of bounds. 20 to 16 out of bounds. Yeah, not a great set by Angela on that one. Uh, usually for an outside set, you want that ball to be pushed all the way to the pin. I uh, probably got 20 feet across the net instead of 30. Tough play there by the libero. She's been doing that all game, and that's another error by her. Yeah, usually in that situation when the ball is coming directly at you, uh, I usually tell my team that they need to replace their body with their platform. So instead of just letting that ball come, they need to take a step to the side and put their platform out so that way they can uh, get a better pass on it. Ryopo gets another point, 22-16. Another middle attack, down for a kill, and Eddie has no answer now. There's no timeouts to stop the momentum. He just has to hope that his team comes back from this, and right now, it doesn't look like it's happening. Falls way up in the air. Emily hits it to Captain Smart. Goes out of bounds, and 
Montclair needs that. They need an unforced error, switch the momentum a little bit, because they're, they're dying for a third set here. Powerful hit there, and Ranapo gets the point. You know, when the ball is hit back row like that, usually you want your, your back row defense to be a little deeper. But the setter, Angela, uh, was probably about mid-court, ended up catching her high on the touch, uh, and it was a shank. She needs to move a few steps back in order for her to get a quality dip. Here's K-Mac with the serve. A lot of talk going on by the Red Hawks right now. Set up the Terpstra. Harris keeps it alive. Hit to the outside for Smart. Tough play here, but they keep it alive. They send it over. K Mac hit to the middle. Ball's kept alive. No one hits the ball up in the air. They both took a swing and a miss. Ramapo, match point. That's why you gotta definitively call it. And by definitively, I mean call it as loud as you can. Call it three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. You have to make sure the other person knows that you are going for it. Harris to K-Mac, this could be game. They keep it alive, they gotta send it over. That's game. Ramapo wins the third set, 25-2-17. So Ramapo, is 3-0 in NJAC. They are 16-6 overall, and they win this match 23-25, 25-17, 25-12, and 25-17.